What's up everyone? Today is the day. The long-awaited day of Ascension is here. We are talking about the new faction focus for Tyranids. Games Workshop just put this article up on their website talking about 10th edition rules for the new Tyranid army. I am so excited. If you like this content and you want to see even more, make sure you like this video, share with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. That way you'll get notified as we put these videos up every single day. Jack, are you excited to talk about the new Tyranid rules? Uh, oh boy, am I. The Great Devourer uh, come to annihilate me in game after game. It's going to be great. It is going to be great. That is, that's lore accurate gameplay, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, Tyranids, we've been waiting for this. New models, it's time. And new rules to go with them. So, just uh, off the back of that uh, Space Marine Faction focus that we got yesterday, we've got a new Tyranid one today. Uh, of course, they start off with a little bit of fluff, just saying, yep, Tyranids are good at eating people, and yeah, you know, they should be. That boy howdy is, is mm -hmm. what they do. Look at those guys, they're eating everyone. Yeah, uh, and as they kind of go down, they, uh, they kind of give some hints of what's to come. Tyranids have a couple ways to apply Battleshock tests. We saw one of them over the weekend when they previewed the, uh, the, the Screamer Killer card effects, because he can deal Battleshock with his gun. Now they mention the Shadows and the Warp ability, that's going to come up very soon, and, uh... They're talking about synapse, so they're going to go right into faction rules. Um, they've already seen some of the stuff from Invasion Fleet. Yep, the but, hyper adaptations. Yep, which was really cool. That is super and cool. And now they're going to tell us the two unique army rules that you get for just being Tyranids, no matter what detachment you have. And that is synapse and shadows of the warp, very much what you'd expect. Uh, so we're going to start off with synapse here. Synapse is uh, the formerly uh, the artist formerly known as Autopass Morale. And yeah, it's not that anymore. It is now a six-inch aura of Tyranids in, within range of a Synapse creature, and that's the keyword. Um, they're in Synapse range, so I'm sure there will be rules around that. And then also, every time they take a battle shock, battle shock test, they take it on 3d6 instead of 2d6. Not the highest, just 3d6, not 2d6. Yeah. So, you will fail it significantly less than you would otherwise. Mm-hmm. But to compensate for that, you, you do have terrible leadership. Yeah, so we've seen the leadership of a couple models. Uh, like the Termagant is leadership 8. Uh, so leadership 8, you would, on 2d6, so if you're not in morale, if you're not in synapse range, you'd expect to fail that just about a little under half the time. Yeah, it's like... Uh, it's like 45% or something. Like it's uh, Fail an 8 plus on 2d6? Yeah. You would fail that about 21 out of 36 times, if I've done my math right. Uh, I think you'd pass it 21 out of 36 times. So you'd fail it 15 out of 36. No, because you need to roll above... You need to roll an 8 plus. Oh, you need to roll an 8 plus. Never mind. I keep thinking you have to roll under. Yeah, yeah. that's... A, no, you're right then. Uh, so you yeah. fail it more than half the time. Yes. Uh, but on 36 take the highest, you will pass that much more often than otherwise. Yes. Uh, still, Probably about 80% of the time, I would, I would say. Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'd have to do the math. I have 2d6 math memorized. I wouldn't. I don't have 3d6 math memorized. Yeah, um, Yeah. so you, you're you better at passing morale checks than you would be otherwise, but you do now have to take them. Yes. So now morale is potentially less crippling than before, but also it's potentially quite crippling. Uh, they've also it's... shortened the range of synapse, and when you're out of synapse, uh, you're failing these they, checks. They have not. <laughs> It's six inches right now. It's six inches right six now? Inches I thought it was like 12 or 18. It's six inches right now. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Still, a uh, little bit interesting here. Uh, Battleshock seems to be a lot more prevalent. A lot, they, it seems it's like a design choice overall, that they want the game to be failing morale a little more often than they are currently. And so Tyranids will be failing a lot more than they are currently, but they're still better at it than other factions probably but yeah. leadership eight plus that, that does hurt a little bit yeah and if you're not in synapse range you're gonna fail a lot yeah if you're not in synapse range you are gonna fail frequently yes. now what this means to me also is if you are a leadership based army your army isn't going to get blanked against you know the half the armies in the game that auto pass morale yeah, which is currently true. a thing if you're like if your chaos knights trying to do pure leadership shenaniganry or, like, Nick always goes on a Night Lords adventure, the Nick that's Lords. True. The Nick Lords. And that doesn't work because every, like, half the armies out there are just, eh, auto pass, re roll failed. If you fail it, you ignore combat attrition. Like, like half the armies in the game, because it's 40k, right? It's all super cool warriors all fighting each yeah, other. Yeah, everyone's a bit of a badass. Yeah, everyone's a badass. So that means that half the armies in the game are going to auto pass morale or mm -hmm. what have you, uh, or just be leadership 10 like Necrons. Um, 
that's not the case anymore. If if Tyranids aren't auto passing morale, who is? Yeah, it does. It really feels like they're just not going to have that auto passing morale be a thing. Because if Tyranids don't have it, it's got to be rare. It's, it's got to be, be really rare. rare. Like Goldman didn't even make you do it; he just makes you re-roll. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, if you don't if you don't re-roll, if you don't auto pass morale next to a Primark or next to the Swarm Lord, who is? I'm sure a Commissar will still be like, "No, stay." <laughs> Kills the guy that passed the battle shock check. I'm, I'm looking at you. <laughs> that, that wouldn't surprise me actually. Um, all right, so that synapse, but the, um, that that I think gives a lot of life to like leadership shenanigan yep. armies. It definitely indicates a, a philosophy change to me. Yeah. Um, so we'll see how important Paddle Shock is as we actually play the game. This does seem like, now on a low leadership army it hurts still, but it does seem like Tyrannus are going to pass uh, Battle Shock more than your average uh, army. Yes. So that may prove to be very important as we see, because Tyrannus also give out Battle Shock more than the average army. Uh, and and that, is because, that is because <laughs> Tyrannids have two army rules, where Space Marines just have one very strong one. Uh, Tyrannids have a second one called Shot in the Warp which is, if your faction is Tyranids, uh, then once in either command phase, you can uh, just call the Shadow of the Warp. And every enemy unit on the battlefield has to take a Battle Shock test immediately, regardless of where they are. And what's interesting here is that this is just in the, the command phase. So I believe that you could do this after your opponent has taken all their Battle Shock tests. Yeah, you can see how many fail, and you can be like, that wasn't enough, do it again. Yeah, you can do the double battle shock. It's pretty. That's pretty funny. Yeah. So, yeah. So that this again, I feel like this is one where if every army is actually going to be failing battle shock tests, suddenly this becomes very good. Yeah. Because uh, we, you know we we've seen a lot of space marines are uh, leadership like six plus or so. I yeah, Gullman's like, a five. Gullman's a five plus, which is the the best leadership we've seen so far. But even even a five plus, you fail if you roll. A one, a, like a two, three, or four, you're still failing one sixth of the time. Yeah. No, um, no, no. I'm, what I'm saying is, if Gulliman is a five, then that's probably where leadership will cap. Yeah, I doubt anyone is going to be braver than a Primarch. Yeah. So most elite armies, I'm going to guess, are going to be six plus. Honestly, which is space marine level. Yep. And at that point, you're failing what ten and thirty six. Yeah. So roughly there. I mean, that, could, is, that is what it is, yeah. Yeah, you're failing barely under a third of the time, which means that if they have to take a battle shock test, and then you'd be like, oh, you passed that, take another one, we're now getting to the point where a lot of armies are actually going to be failing yeah, battle you, shock. If it's a little less than a third and you take it twice, it's roughly 50% mm -hmm. that they're going to fail it if you one make them the take two. two. Yeah. So, Shot and Lorp may end up being really impactful. We've seen battle shock. I'm actually going to click over to battle shock uh, from the previous articles because... Uh, the Tyranid rules so far have literally all involved Battleshock. So, um, if you fail a Battleshock test, objective control goes to zero and you stop holding that objective. Uh, and if they fall back, they have to take a Desperate Escape test for every model unit, and they can't use stratagems. Well, Desperate Escape is going to be very situational as to how much that matters, but objective control, zero. And yeah, I don't, stratagems, I, none. I don't think we actually know what Desperate Escape is yet. I think they hinted at it, but I'm not really sure. I'd have to reread it because I don't because the fact that if I can't rem if I can't remember what it does, then it I don't may know. not do anything. <laughs> it may not do anything. <laughs> um, Who knows? So objective control zero and no stratagems. That alone is huge. And so not having that happen to you as often as possible, having it happen to your opponent as often as possible, could be really good. Especially as we've seen with uh, Space Marines getting some pretty good stratagems. If I can, I mean, we know that they have access to armor of contempt. We know that they have access to fight on death. Yeah, if, if, you're, not getting, if you're not getting through them the normal way, how about you make them scared? Yeah, because, like, honestly, if there's just, like, a, a Terminator unit, let's say, that I'm just like, oh, man, I really have to kill this, but they're going to fight on death. Maybe it's, all right, they take a battle shock in their command phase. Okay, um, that didn't work. Let's hit him with a screamer, you know, let's hit him with another battle shock test with sh shadows. Okay, they still made that. Let's shoot him with a screamer killer, make him take a battle shock test. And if you just keep hammering them, at some point they fail, and you're like, great, now you can't fight on death. Here's all the screamer killers. Like that, that could be real. That is, no, that's quite good. Um, so we'll we'll have to see. Shadow of the Warp looks like it has a lot of potential. Uh, I think we need to see what all the stratagems are like and what ways other factions have to mitigate battle shock, if any. Because Tyranids are traditionally the kings of not running away, and if this, for example, is the best it gets with Synapse, then if other armies like just don't have battle shock mitigation, they just have leadership. 
suddenly just making them take extra tests is going to add up. It's yeah, going to be really good. It will. I, I think Shadows in the Warp is going to be quite strong. Yeah. I also think Synapse is going to be a big deal. <laughs> I, I think it will be. I think that on first read, the Tyranid rules read as less power less powerful than the Space Marine ones because they don't translate as directly to our, our mind. They don't like go we, damage. Well, I mean, like, in 9th edition, we can just say, oh, yeah, well, I know that reroll hits and wounds is good in 9th edition, therefore it's good in 10th edition. Done. I know this is strong. But we don't really know how Battleshock is going to work yet. Like, we're might... aware, but we haven't. none of us have seen it. None of us have played it. Yeah, it's possible that the shadow turn is just brutal. <laughs> like, yeah. It's possible the turn you pop shadow in the warp and start doing things is... It's just too much. Like, I would love, I would love that to be true. You know, uh, it's it's possible. So, yes, yeah, so I, I think I think the Tyranid rules are going to require a little bit more context before we really determine the strength of them. But there is a lot of potential because of how impactful Battle Shock is going to be when you fail it. Yeah, I so, do actually think this is going to be the most impactful morale as if. Yeah, as, uh, we make that joke every edition, but now we're looking at it we're like, oh dang, okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's go down uh, through the rest of this article. They do give us a couple of uh, spotlights here. Um, and uh, that means that we can see Gene Stealer's data sheet. Gene Stealers have received quite a glow up here, which is good because Tyr and Gene Stealers are not very exciting at the moment. But uh, they gained an extra wound. Their leadership 7 plus. So near uh, near Synapse, they'll be a little bit better than the Termagant, but not quite as brave as Space Marine when they're outside of Battleshock or when they're outside of Synapse. Yep. Uh, movement 8, T4. Again, the second wound here is a big deal for a normal, like, infantry skirmishy unit like Gene Stores. Yeah. That's going to add up. Do you think that... I mean, Terminators are three, so we know, like, they're not just ramping everything up across the board. Yeah. I think they're trying to differentiate the Gene Stiller from the Gaunt a little bit more. And because they've added more Gaunt, like, genuses, I guess, they're they're trying to say, like, all right, I'm, like, maybe one of the new Gaunts is going to end up being T4, because they'll look a little bigger than a Gaunt. And they don't want it to just be like, oh, wow, the Gene Slayer is now as tough as the Neurogon. So they're just trying to, like, give a little more. Yeah. Plus, Tyrion, Gene Slayer also just kind of fell away with the last book. So I'm, I'm sure they're just trying to breathe some new life into them. Yeah, Gene Slayers are awesome, too. Uh, Gene Slayers are cool. It's a unit I want to be good. Uh, so four attacks, each weapon skill, two. Strength four, AP two, damage one. Here's some stuff. They've got uh, the core rule scouts eight inches, which... Um, I don't know if they've covered what Scouts is, but if they haven't, I'm going to look at that and say I probably know what that is. I think they probably... <laughs> they probably move eight inches at the beginning of the game. That 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 sounds about right. That's yeah. what Scout used to do. So I'm guessing that's what Scouts at eight inches is, is they just Scout yeah. eight inches. I, I would assume. Yeah. They also move eight, so Scout eight, move eight. eight. That's nice. So they're, they're still pretty fast. They lost Advance and Charge. Uh, faction tier nids they have a five of pinball and here's uh here's another cool thing they re-roll a wound roll of one and when they're attacking someone within range of an objective marker they re-roll the wound roll entirely. entirely yeah so hitting on twos four attacks each re-roll wounds if you're targeting objectives and with an eight inch scout move in addition of course to moving eight inches they're a pretty fast skirmishing unit they're gonna do a good job of okay there's five infiltrators on an objective i'm gonna go send you know, some gene stores to go clear them out. And then they have reroll wounds. Reroll wounds against the objective marker. They're fast enough with a scout move to make good early game skirmishes, I think. And they hit so, on twos natively, yeah. so they're pretty reliable. A five up invuln with two wounds each means it's just a little bit annoying to kill them. Like, they'll die, but they're not going to just die. <laughs> it is funny that they that they went, you know, we're removing the amount of rerolls in the game, and like every data sheet they've revealed so far is like reroll wounds or yeah. reroll hits and wounds, or the Falcon makes you reroll wounds, or yeah, something like that. Yeah, but I like I like this. I like weapon skill two reroll wounds against the right targets. That feel makes them feel very surgical. I, yeah. I like this for Gene Stars. I think this is a, a really good thing. Rerolling wounds rolls of one is, at is a very helpful. Near strength four. Uh, they will presumably be wounding vehicles on sixes, and maybe Gene Stillers no longer kill every tank in the game, and I'm sad. Yeah, I, I, I would be surprised if they killed any tanks in the game. <laughs> I'm going to miss that. The tanks on the objective I could see, but they don't have rending anymore. So it's yeah, not it's like those eight, sixes yeah. to wound are yeah, going that, to be that like... That was nice. I missed those. Days. They just go through. It's like, ah. Uh... So, yeah, just generally pretty happy with this. So this seems like a good uh, update for Gene Stillers. Obviously, we don't have context. Um... There's nothing, uh, there's no weapon options listed here, but there's also presumably another side of the data sheet, as it seems to be, so we haven't seen that yet, but so far, no weapon options listed at all, no war gear. Gene Stores used to have a lot of war gear that rarely came up, and it seemed that they have, uh, maybe simplified it. Yeah, maybe, maybe done in with that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, a five of pinfold with two wounds, it can be 
fairly can be obnoxious. very annoying. Can be fairly obnoxious. Um, yeah, I mean, they seem good. They seem mm-hmm. pretty good. They seem reliable because they re-roll. I the love re-roll the re-roll and they hit on I love re-roll wounds on Dune's Thurs. That is fantastic. I'm really yes. happy about that. Much better than rending. Oh. All right. So uh, now we have the Swarm Lord. The Apex Bioform. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, he is an Apex Bioform, all right? Uh, oh, look so at that guy. The Swarm Lord has a, had a decent amount of changes. So 8-inch move, toughness 10. So he's a little bit tougher than Rhino because uh, yep. Rhino's T9. But he's not about as, tough. as tough as your average, like, I think average vehicle Yeah, would be roughly. Because Rhinos are, are a little bit weaker, so maybe he's a little tougher than that. Yeah, he's slightly tougher than Rhino. Two up armor save, that's nice. Here's what's interesting. Ten wounds. He's currently 13. Yeah. And he's going down to 10. Uh, leadership, 7 plus. Now, he is always in synapse range. Yes. But he is not as brave as Gulliman. But he's always in but synapse. But he's always in synapse range. So that'll help. Um, you pointed out to me mm-hmm. earlier that currently he is as tough as, you know, a land raider or that sort of... Yep, that yeah, sort he's of currently T8. It's currently T8. Mm-hmm. Um, he goes to t- toughness 10, but the land raiders and repulsors and whatnot go to go toughness t- 12. 12, I think. Yeah. Um, and so what that means is he's not as tough as them, which makes sense. His model is not as big, doesn't look as well armored. Mm-hmm. Like, for all... It, the, he should not have been toughness eight how, in the first place. How dare you? Like from a rules perspective, how I get it. Dare you? From a rules perspective, he needs to be toughness eight. Mm-hmm. But um, if you look at his model, he's just Small. not. He's smaller. He's dense. Yeah. He's, he's stocky. He's well very built. thick. <laughs> Whereas I think these rules are when we you know compared to the vehicles they've released are going to match the model a lot yeah. better. Yeah, that's that's true. Um, so they do give us two weapons here. He has a ranged weapon for the first time ever, but it is a psychic weapon. So this is instead of him getting access to psychic or psychic scream or any of that. Um, so synaptic pulse is a psychic torrent weapon. Um, so I think they showed his torrent on a couple of other weapons. And uh, um, I, I believe and it I means that the, you auto hit. Yeah, there's no, the no ballistic skill there. Yeah, not applicable. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 18 inch range, D6 plus three attacks. Strength 5, AP 1, damage 2. So if it's just D6 plus 3 hits, strength 5, AP 1, damage 2, that's a very solid way to kill a couple of infantry models a turn. It's respectable. It's very, very reliable. Very just, here's a, a decent number of saves. There's some AP, there's some damage. Take a couple wins. If you roll the 6, it is. It's very good. It's spicy. Yeah. <laughs> that's spicy. Yeah, that's, yeah. This is going to kill, you know, this is going to kill a space marine almost every time it shoots. Occasionally, it'll kill two or three space marines. I'll be pretty happy. But that, that's just a, a nice shooting attack to just be contributing downfield. I'm very okay with that. Yep. And then we have the Bone Sabers. The Bone Sabers are twin-linked, which, as we know, means that they reroll their wounds. Yep. Uh, so, 8 attacks, weapon skill 2, strength 9, AP 2, damage 3. AP 2, I'm not going to lie, AP 2 surprises me a little bit. I, mean, I feel I, like the Swarm Lord should be AP 3 minimum. Eh, I think they're looking to get rid of the everything just kills everything. I, I get that. Cause, but the swarm lord. I listen. I understand. I think they're making him a little less important. He, he's a small boy. He's a small y- boy. Y- yeah. Um, but, but I mean, the screamer killer is also AP two, I believe. Yeah. You I know? can accept this, but like, I don't like the swarm lord being the same AP as a screamer killer. The screamer he, killer I saw was AP two. Wounds. He rolls wounds. I know. He does have two fewer attacks. I, I, but he I, does I, hit on twos. He does hit on twos. I saw the Screamer Killer at AP2, and I was like, okay, AP Creep is being reduced. I accept this. Swarm Lord, I wanted to stay at, like, three. I, I, That's fair, but I, I think eight attacks at AP3 damage three is probably more than they want in the game. It's the Swarm Lord. I understand. the Swarm I Lord. I hear you, John. <laughs> All um, right. I mean, to be fair, mm-hmm. Gulliman is AP4 on his fist. Yeah. And, and I, he's AP3 on his sword. Yeah, so. and I, I think you could make the Swarm Lord AP3, and it would be okay. He's the, he's the Goleman of Tyranids. I... He really is. He's the Marnius Calgar of Tyranids. Uh, yeah, uh, they fought, and Marnius Calgar lost his arms. Yeah, and Tyranids have been better than, you know, it, Yeah, Zubat. okay. Um, um, he does have a number of rules, which are uh, fairly interesting. I, I will say, reroll oh, yeah. wounds on him is going to be a big deal. <laughs> reroll wounds it, is it lets very him nice. fairly reliably dome tanks, which is going to be a big deal. Me too. Uh, not like the big tanks, yeah. but like the three-up armor save tanks. 
Yeah. You know, if they have like 12 wounds, that means four need to go through. If it's wounded a little bit, he'll walk up and pretty reliably smack it. Okay. So, if it's wounded, he he'll, he should kill it. Yeah. Yeah, but like, okay, we'll see. We'll see. I We need to see what whatever else is like. I just, AP2 bothers well, me. Well, what are the odds that he kills a rhino, actually? By, like, by himself? Not good. It's, it's actually I mean, not... he wounds on fours, but yeah. if he, it, like a toughness 10 vehicle... Yeah, like, it's... like the next step up for a rhino. Currently, he flips two of them in the air. Um, yeah, and yeah, no, he he doesn't actually kill that at all. Uh, counterpoint: What if the rhino spends one CP up for armor of contempt because it's in a gladius force, and he just doesn't kill a rhino? No, he he could totally not kill a rhino. Yeah, because yeah. he, he should do about what five saves to a rhino, roughly. About about there, and then they get a four up against it if they armor of contempt. Yeah, that's the, um, that rhino's alive. My man. That rhino's living. Yeah, yeah. that rhino's alive. Um, Interesting stuff, but you know we need a lot more. If content. they spend armor of contempt, yes. Of otherwise, course. otherwise probably kills it. Yeah, it's right on the line. Yeah, it's right on the line. <laughs> it's right on the line. <laughs> okay, so it's real seems... wounds will help a lot though. But if, and if the game itself is less deadly, that's this is okay. Yeah, he's gonna be a bear to kill. Yeah, yeah. T ten two up armor save. He's got a four up envelope. Um, he's he's still pretty tough. They they got rid of his blade parry, so he no longer has more defense in melee, but still, um, still pretty good. We're we're just gonna kind of have to see points and everything else here. Yeah. Um, because it looks like they've toned him down. He's less wounds, lost his blank saves in melee, but his relative we, toughness. Yeah, his relative toughness, still pretty tough. Yeah. Um, I, I do think Armor of Contempt is going to be ludicrously good. But what if... What if you could make it less easy... Like, what if you could make it cost more? What if you could make it Or what if you get that Rhino to fail a Battleshock test? And then <laughs> they don't get Armor of Contempt. Then they don't get Armor of Contempt. And then, then you might then, kill it. Then they can't CP roll a save either. Oh. That'd be cool. Yeah. Um. So we've got a bunch of different abilities for the Stormlord. Deadly Demise D3. Okay. Uh, Leader. So he's going to be able to join some units. The logical answer here would be Tyrant Guard. You would think. One would think. Uh, we'll we'll see what that ends up uh, being attached to. But Tyrant Guard, like maybe there's something else coming that he can join. But Tyrant Guard is like the first. Like obviously he joins Tyrant Guard. Yeah, that's probably. It. I mean, Tyrant Guard. Guard next guarding to the tyrant. tyrants. Yeah. No, the, I, hey, listen, if they're a unit, man, I would love that so much more than the weird hybrid cis weird thing that exists right now yeah, i think it's just i think it's just gonna be because he doesn't have like a rule to get lone operative the way that gullman does so it looks like it's just he's a leader he's gonna join a tyrant guard unit maybe there's more options but bare minimum he's gonna be able to join tyrant guard yeah um hive commander start of your command phase if this model is on the battlefield that you gain one command point that is pretty good um so that yeah that's that's just pretty good again we we don't have any confirmation on how uh command points are going to work yet um, or like how many you're going to gain, but more CP has been more better since CP were introduced. Yes. So assuming, and again, it looks like it's going to be a five battle round game. So if this ends up being just plus five CP over a game, that in itself, very solid. Yes. Very solid. Five extra CP. Will go a long way. Pretty great. <laughs> um, <laughs> no lie. Yeah. Malign presence once per game. He, he is vect. Once per game when your opponent uses a stratagem. If this model is your warlord and on the battlefield... So, this is the first time that I've seen a reference to a Warlord in a role. I don't even think Gullman referenced Warlord. No. So, if he's your Warlord, but he's the Swarm Lord, uh, then it can use this ability. If it does, until the end of the battle, increase that stratagem's cost to your opponent by one. So, here's the one thing I would I mm -hmm. would say. Let's talk about Sigmar for a second. Oh. Age of Sigmar has mm -hmm. some things that trigger off of what your general is, which is the equivalent for your Warlord. Yeah. But named characters cannot get com uh, cannot get what, command command traits. They can't yeah. get enhancements. Bless your coast, Whatever. That's the whole thing. Um, you can't get enhancements, mm -hmm. which means and only your general can get a warlord trait or their equivalent of a warlord trait. Yeah. So you almost never want to make your general a named character outside of very specific reasons mm -hmm. because like, you don't like that. get that free enhancement. So it's possible that if he is your general, he would not get be able to get a command trait enhancement or oh. or something like that. Or he could. Maybe he could. Or maybe the command trait enhancements aren't tied to your warlord at all, although it would be weird for it to not tie to your warlord. 
I I do not know. Yeah, um, that is an interesting thought, though. Maybe that this yes. is like the equivalent of a warlord trait if a named character doesn't normally get them. For he is an epic hero, which I believe is the new named character. Yes. Um, At first I thought epic hero was like... Gulliman, Magnus, Morty, but no, it is... Just named characters. Named characters. There you go. Uh, and then, uh, real quick, we have Domination of the Hive Mind. This is the last uh, special rule here. Well, a friendly Tyranid unit is within 9 inches, that unit is within your army synapse range. So, for any rules that affect synapse range and for the battle shock being better, uh, the Swarm Lord is 9 inches where other synapse is 6 inches. So he's a little bit better. And 9 inches does go a long way. The three extra inches does actually make a difference. Yeah, it, it roughly mm -hmm. doubles the area controlled by the, the synapse, yep. which is a big deal. Also, it's a four-pin roll. So yep. two up, four up. Is he's still not easy to kill. No. Still and, uh, you know, multi-melters are still strength nine, so they... they still wound him on fours. I mean, they're, they are strength nine. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, and they'll wound him on fives. Oh, that's true. He's T10. Yeah, okay. okay. You know, they wound him on fours now. Yeah. And there's plenty fives. of mechanics to make that better. Um, yeah. Yeah, and then they wound him on fives now. So, nice. Yeah, he's pretty tough. All right, so um, going through some weapons. Not against rupture here. cannons, though. Not against rupture cannons. Um, rupture cannon is a heavy weapon. Cool, and it is forty-eight inch range. Attacks two, so down from three to two. Ballistic skill three, strength eighteen, AP four, damage two d six. So heavy means if it stands still, it hits on twos or yes. plus one to hit. Plus one hit. Um, that is a lot of damage. Yeah, that hurts. That's gonna AP sting. AP four. AP four is a lot of damage. This is the Rhino Killer Extraordinaire. Hits on twos if you stand still. Wounds on twos. Yep. No save. Take your damage, please, sir. Sir, take your damage. Yeah. That is something right there. That. So sounds like you don't send the Swarm Lord to do a Terran effects job. <laughs> Bang. Send bullets. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, that is a very big gun. This uh, compares quite favorably even to the um, uh, the laser destroyer that we saw yesterday in the Space Miracle. This is what, what a the, big gun. It was strength 16. It was strength 16, this I think strength, also AP4. Also AP4. And it was D6 plus 4. Yep. So 2D6 versus D6 plus 4, not significantly different. I think D6 but plus 4 is a little bit toughness better. toughness 9 on 2. Also heavy so that it can get plus 1 to hit it and hold still. Was the laser destroyer not heavy? I didn't think it had anything. I think it was just a. I think it was just type gun. Okay. We, we can check that in a minute. We, yeah, um, that was the only weapon they showed us. They but do give us. Damn, that's a gun. That is a. Gun. That is a gun. When it connects, you will notice. You uh, are rolling them big numbers. Yeah, uh, the endless swarm is a stratagem that we've got. So glad to see this one return. And this is in your command phase. You target up to two endless multitude units from your army, and uh, that are within setup range, or one that is not, and then. All those targeted units, D3 plus 3 models are returned. So this is just endless multitude keywords. We know that Termagants have the endless multitude keyword. As a matter of fact, they tell us that it's Termagants, Hormagants, Gargoyles, and the new Neuragants all have this keyword. So one CP is up to six dead models back in up to two units. Right now, the stratagem exists just to target one endless multitude. Now it's one, sometimes two. That is going to be a lot more annoying if... Uh, if damage is a little lower. Damage is a little lower, yeah. and leadership doesn't, like, do additional damage. Like This also on the... Oh, yeah, go ahead. So if I kill 20 out of a 30-man squad, you're just getting it back. I'm not going to reduce it by another, like, 5. Yeah. Um, another thing to note here, and this, this I like, is that you just use this stratagem in your command phase. So I might do this right before they have to take a battle shock test to try to get them above the threshold. Oh, right, right, right. Or once you know you've passed the battle shock test, then you reanimate onto an objective. That's another way to do it. Yeah. If if you don't think that this will clear the, the the margin. Yeah. Yeah. So interesting options. Maybe I do this to get into synapse range before I have to take the battle shock test. <laughs> like I I don't know. That is really cool. There's, that is a that is a John stratagem if I've ever seen. The, one. I I like Candle Swarm a lot. It's one of my favorite strats. So um so this is this is pretty nice. I'm really glad that this is one of the stratagems that made the jump. Now let's just find out what happened to Overrun. <laughs> <laughs> and circle the prey. <laughs> I hope so. I hope in circle the prey spent one CP and circled the prey and got the heck out of this game. Uh, um, that is um, everything for rules that they showed us here. So uh, we've got uh, just some uh, notes from the the studio. Uh, yep, they want to make Tyranid scarier, so battle shock being a lot more of a thing. Um, that just seems to be kind of like the design space they want to take Tyranids into. They want it to be very scary to play against them. 
Um, so, you know, kind of like how Chaos Knights are like the scariest uh, like army in the game right now. I think they want Tyrion to be the scariest Xeno's army. Because honestly, they are. I mean, look at that. Yeah, like that is... That's scary. I don't want that. Yeah. That, like, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, some people say orcs are the scariest. So it's like, oi, you want a chopper in it? Like, come on. Come on. Who says that? <laughs> no, they're not a scary series. Who says orcs are scarier than... I no mean, one. on the tabletop, they're scary. No one. Mm, see about that. They run you down. <laughs> um, uh, of course, some books that uh, include Tyranids, and that's that. And they end this with a little bit of a teaser as mm. to what is next. And uh, Chaos Space Marines are up next. So they put out Space Marines yesterday. They put out Tyranids today. Uh, Betting Man says that they put out Chaos Space Marines tomorrow morning. Well, that they, would be they nice. have not committed to that. They, they have not committed. This week. I said, I said Betting Man. It could be Friday. could be Saturday. It could be July 4th. Uh, but uh, I'd say it's more likely than not that they're just going to do these one a day. I would really like that. Well, I would also. I would like that a lot. And if they do, that'll be Chaos Space Marines tomorrow. And I hope that's true. So, um, that is everything for the article here. Uh, really excited for this. Tyranids uh, seem like they work a little bit more into the new 10th edition framework than Space Marines did. Space Marines are just, yep, we're going to take known mechanics and uh, just apply them here, like real hits and wounds. That's always good. Uh, but a lot of Battleshock manipulation from Tyranids, a lot of new profiles. I honestly, so something to be said is that it, some of the profiles, like the Swarm Lord being looking a little worse, could all be balanced out by points costs. Yeah. And if yeah. we end up with a world where Tyranids are not as beefy stat lines as they are right now, but I get more of them, that is more Tyranid to me. Yeah. Points are everything. Points are everything. Points are everything. If you make a unit a little weaker and drop its points by a lot, it became better. Yeah. I also, frankly, would just be very okay with it if Tyranids just had more stuff on the table. Yeah, I think Tyranids should have Tyranids, a lot of Yeah, stuff. Tyranids, like, a Termagant shouldn't beat a Guardsman in a one-on-one -on -one fight. But I should get more. And two Termagants shouldn't beat a Space Marine. But I'd like to hit him with four. That's how I want to play Tyranids. So, Listen, 20 Termagants shouldn't beat a Space Marine in the lore. Then I'll bring 30. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, so, thank you so much for watching this video, everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you are just as excited for the Hive Minds return as I am. If you want to catch even more content on our uh, on our YouTube channel here, make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel. That'll get you a notification every time we go live. And guaranteed, whenever this Chaos Space Marine video comes up, we will be live talking about it right afterwards. So... Really, really excited for that. And of course, if you want even more awesome Art of War content, check out the link in the description to this video. That'll get you access to the Art of War War Room. That's where you can get top level players like myself, Jack Harpster, and many more, teaching you how to get better at the game that you know and love. You can even get a free three-day trial in that link below, thewarroom.vhx.tv. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. We'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.